Over the weekend, we had the Super Bowl. Of course, this was filled with another level of woke garbage, but that's exactly what you would expect. It's sad, but it's true. And of course, since the whole entire thing is woke, you would expect the commercials to be woke as well. So today we are going to be covering some of the commercials that were in the Super Bowl. One of the commercials that were inside of the Super Bowl was this company here. And yes, this company has millions of dollars to spend on a commercial just to say, don't judge thou neighbor. What they do not talk about is a subject that they know nothing about, which we will be covering. Another thing that happened this weekend was another one of Joe Biden's press conferences, but this one was held after his bedtime, so he was really tired, he made lots of gaffes, and of course, this was very, very late at night, 8 p.m. With that being said, let's dig in. Facts over facts over tracks is in that spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. Starting, we have the woke commercials. So, starting at the beginning, the Super Bowl played the national anthem and then followed that with the woke music piece called the black national anthem, which is just stupid. Of course, jam packed between this were some of the wokest commercials we have seen in a while, starting with this one here. Don't ask me what you know is true. Don't have to tell you. I love your precious heart. I, I was standing. You were there. So, of course, on the face, it seems like, oh, it's good, and Jesus and blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. If someone was to claim that Jesus cleaned feet, then it wouldn't really matter whatsoever because, I mean, I guess he did it a few times. But the thing is, what they are saying in context with this very thing, compared to what he did throughout his whole entire life, that wouldn't even be worth mentioning. You know, like the fact that he opened up the gates of heaven and, you know, he's our Lord and Savior himself. Through the commercials, they said, don't judge thou neighbor. And that is highly taken out of context. What God and Jesus wanted us to do was lead people down a path that we know is cherishable and flourishing. It says so in the Bible here in Mark 16, 15 through 16. And he said to them, go into all of the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. 2 Timothy 4-2 Preach the world, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exert with complete patience in teaching. Romans 10-9 through Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All of this to say that when people say love thou neighbor, it means something completely different than what God and Jesus intended it to be. It's sad but it's true. The Bible says that you should guide your neighbors to God and Jesus. The reason why I'm talking about this is because of the commercial that we saw at the Super Bowl and because of the fact that people take this for granted all of the time. People say, oh, well, since I need to love my neighbor, then I'm just going to let my neighbor sin. No, you need to tell them that it, they're sinning or else that's a sin itself. If you know that somebody is committing a sin and you don't tell them that it's a sin, then that's a sin in itself because of the fact that they might not know that it's a sin, but you know it's a sin. With that being said, it's very, very complicated and of course, they don't know this when, or they do know this, when they're getting themselves into this million dollar deal at the Super Bowl and they have so many people talking about it. It's not right whatsoever. That's not the only thing that happened during the weekend. We also had Joe Biden's press conference as I talked about at the beginning of the show. He had this conference about his classified documents, but of course it ended up going into something totally different because of the fact that he was just tired because it was after his bedtime, I guess. He started talking about his classified documents and that he's not responsible for what his team team did when moving his classified documents to his unlocked garage with Russian and Chinese puppets into his garage with his derelict son. It's not his responsibility whatsoever. I mean, if he's not the one that put him there, then it doesn't really matter because it's not really his house, right? It's just concerning when he is taking questions and he looks this confused. Mr. President, 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 Mr. President,
Then he gets a question about the Middle East and he says that he's working hard to get the war to stop, blah, blah, blah. He then ends up saying that he knows a deal that will get done, but he can't say the specifics of it yet. Then he walks away and a reporter asks him, how about the American hostages in Gaza? And then he turns around and says this. I'm of the view, as you know, that the conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip has been um, over the top. I think that, uh, as you know, initially the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. I've been pushing really hard, really hard. Which does not make any sense at all because Mexico is next to us in the southern border, not the border of Hamas and Gaza. It just it does not make any sense here. Of course, when we look at this and compare this to how Putin handled his interview with Tucker Carlson, we can see that this 30 minute press conference looks like a complete joke. He's mumbling and bumbling his words. He doesn't even know how, what to even say. He looks confused. He looks old. He does. He looks weak. But then Putin over here can talk for about two and a half hours and retell the whole entire history of Europe, even though Putin, yes, I admit, lied a lot. It still looks good for him to be sharp, unlike our American president, which looks weak, sleepy, and mumbling and bumbling. And, and of course, when he walks, he he looks like a rumba banging into the walls, seeing where he's supposed to go, going from right to left on the stage, falling down the stairs, tripping over stairs, going into Air Force One and then falling five times. It's sad and it's pathetic. Before we get into the headlines of the week, if you have not seen it already, I posted a brand new episode of Don't Trust What You See. Watch the trailer here. The goal of Senate Bill 4 is to stop the tidal wave of illegal entry into Texas. Or migrants as we speak right now, trying to cross into the U.S. There's a bunch of immigrants coming through my property. I do not condone this. Where are you from? From Turkey. She captured 16 illegal immigrants jumping her fence inside a gated community. Dozens of migrants are sheltering inside Boston's Logan Airport. <laughs> Families, many with young kids, sleeping on blankets, pillows, and benches in the airport's Terminal E. This is the America that we are living in now. Look it in the face and tell me this is building back better. It's not, and you know it as much as the next person. A few months ago, we talked about the reasons why this is all happening. And the problem isn't getting any better. With our government supposed to be protecting us, the people, this is the complete opposite of the very thing they're supposed to do. Digging right into the headlines of the week, we actually have a CNN or a Daily Wire article, I should say. That's going to be that's going to be the media's takes. But we do have the Daily Wire article first. We have Senate that passes ninety-five billion dollar foreign aid bill despite opposition from over half of Republican senators. Now, it should be more than half. It should be 100% of Republican senators because of the fact that why are we sitting here passing a bill that's going to help other countries before we help America first? It does not make much sense here. $95 billion when we have trillions and trillions of dollars in debt where are we getting this money from here? The Senate passed a $95 billion aid bill earlier on Tuesday morning that allocates money for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. The bill passed by on a 70 to 29 vote, with over half of the Senate Republicans voting against the measure. The aid package allocates $61 billion for Ukraine, $14 billion for Israel, $4.83 billion to U.S. allies in the Indo-Pacific and over $9 billion for global humanitarian aid. The bill passed with support by nearly all Republicans and 22, I mean, all, nearly all Democrats and 22 Republicans. It's certainly been years, perhaps decades, since the Senate passed a bill that will so greatly impact not just our national security, but just the security of our allies, but the security of the Western democracy. Chuck Schumer, which is lying out of his ass, said, so, of course, when we sit here and look at this, why are we sitting here saying that we need foreign aid, foreign aid? Oh, no, we need to help our neighbors. We need to do this and do that and do this. Our southern border is open. We had over 10 million people come through our southern border 
just within the last three years alone. So why are we going to sit here and say that we are not allowed to protect our country first? We have to protect other countries overseas. How about we protect us? Make sure that our border is secure because a country without borders is nearly is is not a country. It's merely a country because how are you going to have a country if the borders of your country are wide open for anybody to come into? You can't hold a country like that. It's not safe. And it's not only safe. If it's, on, it's not only not safe, but it's also um, it's also not telling where your country starts, where your country ends, because it's just fluid. It goes wherever it wants to because the country doesn't have any borders. So, moving on to the next article, we actually have an article from the Daily Wire. So, Gina and Elon fight the Holly, the power in Hollywood. So, as soon as Gina Carano saw one of the world's f- richest men post this message on X, formerly known as Twitter, she knew at the time that um, at the time had come to take her fight to court. If you are unfairly, if, uh, if you were un fairly treated by your employer due to postings or liking something on this platform, we will fund your legal bill. No limit. Please let us know. Almost no one in the country has a cleaner, higher profile claim to Elon Musk's offer than the actress who became a breakout star on Disney's hit Star Wars his series The Mandalorian. In 2021, Gina Carano began sharing her political opinions, criticizing COVID masks and mandates and poking good-natured fun at business bullies who demand others others state their preferred pronouns. The studio forced her to undergo re-education training, but when she suggested that the Holocaust-era hatred might provide a contrary tale to America's increasing atmosphere of tolerance and division, the company fired her. And of course, a few years ago, this was a hit story. Obviously, they got signed for the Daily Wire, or Gina Carano got signed to the Daily wire she was in a few movies that they already made and she's probably going to be in new movies that's upcoming in the daily wire so of course she didn't go without a job for long but at the same exact time it needs to be said that disney should not be allowed to fire people just based off of what they post on social media you have the freedom of speech of course there's a act there's a certain extent that they could go and say okay well if you threaten other people's lives then that's one thing but the thing is who's going to sit here and say what about who so that's the thing. These are the questions here. Who's making the rules? Who? What is the definition of threatening somebody's life? Because if you ask a leftist what the definition of threatening somebody's life is, then you would say, oh, well, this is um, making up my dead name or saying my dead name, quote unquote, or um, calling me by the wrong pronoun. That's threatening my life. It's not threatening your life. I mean that in the literal aspect. If you're sitting here saying, well, I wish that you died or I wish that you um, got shot or something like that. That's something different. And that's the actual definition of threatening somebody's life. So that's the definition that I'm going with here. So at the same exact time, I would say that if she did something astronomically big and saying like, oh, this and that and this, listen, I can understand why she would get put on leave at Disney. But then there's so many directors of Disney that are disgusting that are go- doing things to children all the time like a pedophile ring and then at the same exact time they don't get fired they get they get um upgraded they get promoted because of the fact that disney loves to do all of these weird things to children um that's exactly why when the child stars go into disney or go into nickelodeon they end up doing drugs to escape that system because of the fact that they know it themselves that it is not a good system to be in. It's not a good atmosphere to be in as a child star. It's sad, but it's true. We need to ad- admit that Hollywood is disgusting when it comes to children. Now, moving on to the media's takes. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Okay, moving with the first article, we actually have an article from the Daily Mail. We have a Jewish theater goer who was hounded out of Suro Theater when comedian Paul Curry unfured Palestinian flag and led chanters telling him to get out reveals he feared comic would punish him and thinks he should be banned. A terrified Jewish theater theater going theater goer was who was hounded out of London's Suro Theater when a comedian unfeared a Palestinian flag and led chanters telling him to leave has told Mel online now he fears the comic was going to punish him. Comedian Paul Curry is alleged to have incurred, incur, encountered a 200-strong crowd. Um, abs, absurdist, absurdist comedian Paul Curry is alleged to have encouraged a strong 200 crowd to chant "Get the f out" in Free Palestine at Levrive Elton at a Central Theatre, London Theatre, 
who which used to be a Saikong on a Saturday night. Mr. Elton, who was out celebrating his 33rd per birthday with a friend, has revealed how he was left terrified from the mob mentality and has called for Curry to be banned from performing at theaters. Audience members who were who f left feeling uneasy when Curry, who performed hours after attending a pro-Palestine rally in London, pulled out a Ukraine flag, followed by a Palestinian flag at the end of his one-hour show, and demanded a strong standing ovation. He then confronted Mr. Elton and his friend because they stayed sat down before leading pro-Palestinian chanters as they fill... fill fled the venue. Curry has not responded to requests for comment, which is just disgusting. At this point, it's like, why do people continue to do stuff like this? Why do people continue to do stuff like this when you're openly discriminating against another person just for their religion? Just because of the fact that they don't want to stand up to and, and do a standing ovation just for something that you said, now you oust them from the crowd? They paid for your ticket. Be a little bit more humble. It's disgusting. I'm speaking exclusively to Mail Online, Mr. Elton, who moved from Israel to London five, year, five years ago. I don't think theaters should book this person. He seemed violent and dangerous. The software engineer whose seats were behind Curry added, the only way out was through the stage and had to actually get on stage quite closely to him. And I was quite afraid that he'd throw a punch because he was still cursing and shouting. He got out his Palestinian flag and shouted, Mother Effer, you'll have to watch it again on your way out. Yeah, it's just stupid. Yeah. I mean, obviously, huh, obviously, this is a story. This, more people should be talking about this because at this point in 2024, nobody should be discriminated against in their religion just because of the fact that they don't want to stand for a, a Palestinian flag. It's disgusting. But you know what's also disgusting is that transgender people had just invaded the um the capital in Iowa because of a new bill to classify gender by a lot based on biology which is the correct way by the way so these are a bunch of people standing right here they're chanting stuff they're just obviously they have their flags they have their um quote unquote trans flags um some masks are falling off their face and stuff like that so obviously it's a it's a invasion when the right does it but it's not the left it's not an invasion what the left does it. It's just stupid at this point. We have a CNN article. We have Trump's new Supreme Court gambit doesn't even try to hide that it's delaying tactics. So before we even read the CNN article, we must remember something. So in 2017 or 2016, I should say, Hillary Clinton was being investigated for her emails on her server, which she bleached bits. Now, people were saying that she needs to go to court before the election because of the fact that the people deserve the answers when voting in 2016. Now, a lot of people said, oh, no, well, Trump is lying about this. Trump is lying about this. How about we bring these people to court and say, well, how about how about we say prove it through the court of opinion, prove it through the court of law. And if you are proven to be guilty or proven to be innocent, that is going to be reflected in the polls. Now, I believe that it should be held before the election because of the fact that um, because of the fact that we deserve to have all of the answers of our candidates and we need to know who we're voting for before we vote for them so that's what i believe in but the thing is that we have a president that is set so if we go on a reuters article that was posted about seven years ago we will see that the fbi is now and or was being investigated over a pre-election decision on clinton on clinton's emails so of course the fbi of in 2006 yeah i think 2017 January 12th, they're being investigated because of the fact that they went and investigated Hillary Clinton over her emails. And this, quote unquote, influenced the election. So because of the fact that the FBI is in, in, um, investigated Hillary Clinton or was investigating Hillary Clinton, they said that that influenced the election. But then when it comes to Trump, it doesn't influence the election. It doesn't make much sense here. We should have a we should have a standard at play. If it's going to influence the election, it's going to influence the election for everyone. It's not going to influence the election for one person and not influence the election for another person. It doesn't make much sense here because at the same exact time, when we have the information in front of our face, we can make an, a better decision about stuff when we have all the information in front of us. So let's just say that there was something that was happening with Trump's classified documents. We deserve to see all of that, all of the evidence laid out in court, but the 
thing is that Trump was so unfairly prosecuted and so unfairly treated through his whole entire campaign that now nobody trusts the media and what they are reporting about this fact. They don't trust what Trump. Uh, they don't trust what they're saying uh, about Trump. They don't trust the media when it comes to any of the candidates anymore because the media lied so many times to our face. Now, a lot of people have been saying, oh, well, the media doesn't lie to you. Like, get over yourself. The media lies to us all the time. I can't believe the fact that people are still saying in the year 2024 that the media is not lying to you. This is just a statistic of how many people have actually stopped watching the mainstream media. They have switched to social media services that allow free speech like X, formerly Twitter, to look at the evidence and look at the data themselves to make their own informed decision. They're not looking at the mainstream media anymore because they know the mainstream media is lying to them. They would rather look at the facts themselves and inform their own opinion. That's exactly why I'm laying out this whole entire standard because if the leftists in the media more broadly said that this is a president that we have set in 2017 with Hillary Clinton, then why isn't that the the president is applied equally to everybody under the equal law? It doesn't make any sense here. We're sitting here saying that it's this rules for thee and not for me, or vice versa, the rules for they and not for me, or whatever the heck I just said, but you know, the opposite. The thing is, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that they like to play this little game. It's called you are going to follow the rules and I'm going to break the rules. So obviously, it means the same exact thing as what I just said, rules for thee and not for me. But the thing is that the Democrats will not stop at anything. They are not going to stop at anything to make sure that Trump does not win this election. I'm not reading that CNN article, of course. So moving into another article, we actually have an MSNBC article now. This is actually really fun. Um, this is actually really fun just completely neglecting the mainstream media and saying, listen, we have facts to back up our case. And this is exactly why you should follow my show over at X because I do post new episodes every single day. And I, you should follow me over on X too because I do post new information as soon as it gets revealed to me. So if you don't want to wait for me to upload a show or an episode, you can follow me right over on X and I post every single day, multiple times a day. So as soon as information comes out about anything you you have the first dibs on the information that i have at my hand um and you don't have to wait for me to upload the show you don't have to wait for other things you can just see my opinion as stuff happens so that's the most important thing about x is that it, it allows us to have free speech and say our opinion because the things that we are are seeing in america right now are unprecedented now of course the same exact thing happened in 2016 and of course um, we have seen time and time again that the information that they have told us about many things have been wrong, like I said before. But this brings us into the MSNBC article that we are going to be deal with now. So Trump encouraging Russia to attack NATO allies is as foolish as it is dangerous. Now, of course, MSNBC is not going to allow us to actually look at the facts about what Trump is saying. So they are saying that, oh, Trump threatened to withdraw from NATO and blah, 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 and he's blah, blah, blah. Listen, if we were to take a look at the actual statistics on this, and this is actually reporting from usnews.com, we can actually see that about 35% of NATO countries meet the group's defense spending target. Now, what Trump was saying is that America was paying the, one of the highest amounts to be in NATO and we're paying the bill when it comes to everything else. Just because we're the most powerful country does not mean that we should be paying for everybody else. The thing is that everybody should be carrying their own weight when it comes to NATO and that's the exact point that Trump was making. Trump was making a point that if we are going to stay here and be part of NATO, then why are we going to pay the bills of everybody else within NATO? It doesn't make much sense. That's exactly what the MSNBC article does not want to cover. Now, Moving on to the next article, we actually have a Daily Wire article. We have Trump explains NATO stance after negotiating story draws controversy. So on Monday, former President Donald Trump explained his stance on NATO after drawing controversy with a story about how he used hardball tactics to negotiate with other world leaders on supporting the alliance. A statement posted on Truth Social talked about how Trump who is seeking a second term in the White House, argued how member nations contribute more to NATO's collective defense with a strong United States leader pushing them to meet the 2% minimum GDP defense investment guideline. When I told the 20 countries that weren't paying their fair share that they had to pay up and said, without doing that, you will not have a strong United States military protection, the money came rolling in. Trump said after the opening line claimed that his critics had acknowledged how strong he made NATO. After so many years of the United States picking up the tab, it was beautiful to cite 
to a, a beautiful sight to see. But now, without me, they're to say you must pay. There are at it, they are at it again. We are helping in Ukraine for more than a hundred billion dollars, more than NATO. He continued along allotting to U.S. support for Ukraine in its war against Russia. We have nobody that they respect, and they insist on paying far less than we do. Wrong. NATO has equalized, and now they will do that if properly asked. If not, America first. Make America great again, Trump said. I completely agree with this because now we're going to sit here and say, well, okay, well, if you look at it, then America is is uh, the most rich country when we look at NATO. It doesn't matter. Other countries need to pick up the slack when it comes to NATO because we're going to sit here and pay the bill for everybody else. But everybody else isn't going to pay the bill for us to fix our roads or to fix our highway systems in China. It doesn't make any sense here. We're paying our tax dollars to fix other countries' highway systems, to fix other countries' public transportation, other countries everything infrastructure and us in america we don't have good infrastructure we have potholes in the streets that need fixing we have street lights that don't even turn on we have america at a debt crisis right now we have um, hundreds of americans being killed every single year from a fentanyl crisis from our drug cartels coming through the southern border we have 10 million illegal immigrants coming through the southern border within joe biden's presidency alone and we have war within the within the whole entire world so there's multiple fronts that we are being attacked from in America. We need to realize that we need to start fixing this other than blame, playing the blame game and saying, oh, it's his fault. No, it's his fault. Under the Trump administration, every little thing that would happen, they would blame Trump. But then when it comes to Joe Biden, they don't want to blame him. It's disgusting. And obviously, everybody realizes this. Now, moving into the... Excuse me. Moving into the next article, we actually have an article from the Daily Wire. We have in daring operation IDF rescues two hostages held by Hamas and ref... Rafia, Rafa, the Rifa in Rifa. I uh, <laughs> I don't normally say that word. So, Bucking reported pressure from President Biden not to proceed with attack on Rifa. Israel performs rescue. In daring operation, Israel Defense Forces, the IDF, rescued two Israeli hostages on Sunday who were being held by Hamas terrorists in Rafa. In the face of President Joe Biden's repeatedly warning Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu not to proceed with atta Israel attacks on Rifa, a Hamas stronghold in the southern Gaza Strip, IDF along with forces from Shin Bet, Israel's intelligence agency, rescued Fermando Marman, 61, and Louis Har, 71, who were kidnapped, by, kidnapped from Nar Yitzhak, I'm going to butcher that name on October 7th. The two men are now in Sheba Tel Hashmra Hospital and in good condition. Quote, the operation was conducted for an hour and included a prolonged battle in the building, in nearby buildings with Hamas militants, dozens of airstrikes, and an escort by AD IDF tanks and to the helicopter. Um, Yinetz Yov Z Zuin reported, Three terrorists were, who were guiding the hostages were killed, and one IDF soldier was lightly injured. Um, the forces stormed into the building in using explosives, entered the building, and pulled the two hostages out. Israeli National News reported a gun battle developed at the scene while the Air Force attacked the area and the fire was opened by near, from nearby buildings. IDF spokesperson Rear Deem Daniel Hagar said... Hayam ha ha officers arrived at Rifa at around 1 a.m. and carried out a very complex a action on the premises in the second floor where the hostages were held, where the hostages were held. The Times of Israel noted, reaching the target in the heart of Rifa was very complex, um, adding that the forces conducting the rescue hugged and protected Louis and Fernando with their bodies. The troops pulled out Louis and Fernando out of the apartment and rescued them under fire until they reached the safe zone. Hagar Hagari said this was a very complex rescue operation under fire based on surveillance intelligence, a professional and accurate operation. It was a very tense and very touching light night. Such an operation was made possible thanks to the great sacrifice of our standing army and reserves troops who fell and were injured in the battles. Without their sacrifice, we have not reached we would not have reached this moment. Even in the morning, we do not forget for a moment that 135 134 hostages now are being held in Gaza. Agari con concluded. And of course, this happened on the same exact day as the Super Bowl. Not a lot of people were talking about it. 
And of course, a lot of people were saying, bring back our hostages. And we should bring back the hostages, especially American hostages that are still being held by Hamas in Gaza. It's disgusting. Moving into the next article, we actually have a Breitbart article. We have Israel responds to Chris Van Holland's war crime claim in conflict with dry facts. So the state of U Israel responded Tuesday to claims on Monday by United States Senator Chris Van Holland, Democrat from Minnesota, that it is a guilty it is guilty of a war crime and is allegedly deliberately withholding food from Palestinian children, saying his claims were in conflict with the dry facts. As Breitbart News noted, Van Holden went on an anti-Israel rant on the floor of the Senate on Monday making the war cl crime claim. Presented by Presented with Van Holen's allegations, Israel responded with empathetic rejection. The only people who are deliberately withholding aid are Hamas, said Israeli government spokesperson um, Alien Levi. He also said that Israel has been exceeding its obligations to provide aid, that Hamas has been hijacking aid in the United Nations Relief in Works Agency, UNRWA, has been covering up for the theft. Levi presented an extensive summary of Israeli's facilitation of the entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza, citing the Coordinator of Government Activities in the Territories, COGAT's website, which provides daily statistics on the amount of aid entering Gaza. For example, on Tuesday, the website reported 174 trucks carrying humanitarian aid were inspected and transferred to the Gaza Strip yesterday, February 12th. 23 trucks were inspected at... Nigeria and transferred via the Rifa crossing, and 151 were inspected and transferred via Kriam Shalom, and 83 trucks carried food. Levi said that there were no restrictions, zero, on food, medicine, water, and other forms of aid entering Gaza. Once it had been inspected by Israeli authorities, he noted that seven times as much aid was crossing from Israel directly to Gaza, though the Karen Shal Shalom crossing point as though Rifa on the Egyptian border. The problem is that UNRWA is struggling to distribute the aid at the p pace Israeli is allowing it in. He noted that so much aid was entering via Karim Shalom that it had to be closed on Saturdays to allow international agencies to catch up with the pace of delivery. delivery. Countries that wanted the Palestinians to receive more aid should simply send it. We've already we're ready to receive it. UNRWA, he said, should be replaced with the UN's agencies that have tried and, treat tried and treated experiences that are not already riddled with Hamas. Any allegations that Israel is somehow restricting the delivery of aid is simply in conflict with the dry facts, he said. Van Holen also used a misquote of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's reference to the biblical amuk, a music that has been used by anti-Israel activists and by South African lawyers at the Haraj in that dates to Nazi propagandists in the Second World War. Of course, these same exact people that are on the same exact side as Hitler are going to be the same exact people that are anti-Israel now and saying that Israel should not be a state, Israel should not be a country. It's just, it's disgusting what they're saying. What is going on here? Well, going back in time to Nazi propaganda, we're going back in time to things that don't even make any sense because of the fact that why you, know, you want to prove on why um, it is good that 1,100 people died on October 7th, it's disgusting. Like, I don't understand people's point of view when it comes to this. So moving into the next article, we actually have a Federalist article. We have, you don't have to be a Ukraine expert to know Senate GOP leaders are a bunch of frauds. So, of course, Senator Tom Tulsa of North Korea, Carolina apparently thinks that you have to be well-briefed United States Senator to understand the nuisances of Ukraine war in that ordinary voters are simply too ignorant to have an opinion on the matter, which is just disrespectful. Remember this in November. Our base cannot simply, cannot possibly know that what's at stake at the level that any well-briefed United States Senator should know about what's at stake if Putin wins. Till it's said on Monday, according to Bunch Poll News, he then blasted fellow Republicans who are being driven by just the perceptions of their base and need to grow a spine and get behind sending another $60 billion to Ukraine, which is just stupid. It's hard to imagine a sentiment more contem contemptuous of the average voter than s these sneaking, sneering comments from Tillis. Only senators with special knowledge in his telling are competent to judge the war in Ukraine and understand the stakes. 
What's nonsense is its appeal to authority masquerading as an argument, the kind of, of thing we usually hear from the left, not the Republicans. Thank you. What is a woman? Thank you know what a woman is what you are is a biologist what you are what are you a biologist think you know what the president has dementia think you know that the president has dementia what are you a neurologist neuroscientist sounds like a joke but it's actually what we've heard over the weekend from a chorus of biden lack of keys in the press tasking tick tasking that it doesn't matter what the special counsel report said on the biden's obvious cognitive decline in failing memories because special counsel robert her is not a neurologist some of these people were just sh shameless enough to go on national news shows and say this out loud it's just disgusting because now they're calling you the voter stupid remember this in november that a lot of people are sitting here saying oh no you the voter you don't know anything you don't know anything because i'm telling you the truth and then you're telling yourself lies to just um sweet little nothing to make yourself feel better at night it doesn't make any sense here what we are saying is we the voter have the right to know all of the information and use our own mind to have an opinion on the matter and then once you have an opinion on the matter then you can say in november i'm going to vote for this person or i'm going to vote for this party but what they want to do instead is just tell you what to think they want to tell you what to think tell you who to vote for and then if you don't have the same exact ideologies and the same exact opinions as them then it's wrong it doesn't make any sense so moving into the next article we have get ready for we have a Federalist article. We have get ready for the cringy campaign to make Biden seem lucid. So, um, moments after the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, Joe Biden's account mocked conspiracy theories by tweeting a dark Brandon meme that one were the dodging president's features later laser eyes with the words, just like we drew up, drew it up underneath. Sure, it's cringy and dumb, but a cartoon might be the only way to make the president appear operational. After Special Counsel Robert Hurd's report concluded Biden was too feeble-minded to stand trial for his alleged decades-long mishandling of classified information, the White House immediately tried to create the impression that the president, whose mental acuity was never anything to write about, um, was the sharpest president, the sharpest pr person in the country. Hey, look, Biden's already on TikTok. Grabbing with the kids. Gabbing with the kids. The White House Press Secretary, Karine John pierre swears that Biden does more in one hour than pe most people do in a day. Expects expected a torrent of leaks portraying the president as a robust force of nature. The president, we've already learned, was privately lucid over the her report, particularly the claim he didn't remember when Bu died. Speaking at the, the House Democrat retreat last week, Biden angrily cursed about the about the language in the report in private biden also called Bibi netanyahu his top red hearing these days in Ashley, in at least three instances as biden spent the week pressuring netanyahu to give hamas a press a pass israel freed another two hostages anger isn't a sign of youth exuberance and lashing out at people as biden often does when asked a slightly discomforting question shouldn't be confused with mental competency competency those in cognitive decline in fact are often inter irritated by questions they may yell things like come on man in frustration and become aggressive about their memory loss they also create alternative timelines and conflict memories as biden seems to do more these days than usual of course because he, just the other day he tried to say that he met with a person that has been dead since the 1900s so is he actually meeting these people like he's actually seeing ghosts and he's saying oh well queen elizabeth it's you or is he actually sitting here mis uh, misremembering because he's conflicting the timelines? He's conflicting his former self and when he was about 50 years old, about 100 years ago, with the 80-year-old um, self that he was just 10 years ago. I don't know. But the thing is, Joe Biden is never going to acknowledge the fact that his mental um, well-being has declined more in recent times than it has been throughout his whole entire senator term vice presidency and now the last two years of his presidency he's going in a sharp decline and it's not good for this country we need to actually remember this in november because it's very important for us to make sure that a lot of people know that the president is not going to have the mental capacity to actually force us into good into you know a flourishing country and is not going to have the mental capacity to get us to a war if war was to be at our back door it's already happening and it's going to come quicker than you think thank you all for watching thank you all for listening and i will see you guys on wednesday